Okay, I hope uh, audio and video are clear. Let me know. Yeah. So, the mission for integrated development of horticulture. You know what is meant by horticulture? It is the cultivation of plantation crops. Unlike our routine crops, take the example of uh, our agricultural crops. So, within six months, you will get the crop. Later, we will clear everything. But plantation crops, generally mango, mangoes. Of course, even in the horticulture, uh, growing of vegetables is also is, in, uh, is also included. When you come to India, from long period, we are stressing on the horticulture sector. Now take the example of one example, a dragon fruit. Earlier, we used to import the dragon fruit. Now, we are producing the dragon fruit. The same case with the kiwi. Kiwi, yes, we are producing that. And even our horticultural production has increased a lot. And the second thing, it is creating a lot of uh, employment opportunity. And third thing, it will play a key role in doubling the farmer's income. Okay. And fourth thing, it is also, uh, I mean, extending us and guaranteeing us the, I mean, food security. No doubt in it. Because, uh, um, I take the example of uh, uh, mango. It's okay. From mango, of course, in this season, we may consume the fruit. But if you convert that into pickle, you can use it for two years. Minimum two years. Even beyond two years also, I don't know. So, it will give us food security. See, at the time when the vegetable prices are soaring, then then uh, just you will I mean, complete your lunch or dinner with the help of the pickle. So, it is the meaning of the food security. Under the Ministry of uh, Agriculture and Farmers Welfare has approved Three new centers of excellence for horticultural crops. Kamlan, dragon fruit in Bangalore. Mango and vegetables in Jaipur. Vegetables and flowers in South Goa. Serve as demonstration and training centers. So, just to involve in R&D. R&D with regard to these fruits. And uh, in spite of good production, the price of dragon fruit is not falling. No doubt in it. Okay? Yes. Serve as demonstration and training centers will be used as a source of planting material for fruits and vegetable seedlings for protected cultivation. So, under controlled cultivation, they will grow, they will involve in R&D and uh, they will disseminate that knowledge to the other people who are interested to grow these crops. Like take the example of Green Revolution. In course of time, it was extended to many crops and even from uh, from North India, it came to South India. Now, MIDH, it is a centrally sponsored scheme, 60% born by center, 70-40% state, for holistic growth of horticulture sector, covering fruits, vegetables, root, and tuber crops also, mushrooms, etc. Okay? All are included in the MIDH. Implementing Agency, National Horticultural Board. Of course, many schemes are there in this now. India is the second largest producer of horticulture, producing about 12% of the global food and vegetable production. Of course, first is the China. In India, 10% of land in horticulture contributes to 33% of agricultural value. So, horticulture crops are more efficient than the agriculture. Uttar Pradesh produces the largest share of horticultural crops in India. Uttar Pradesh. Of course, area is uh, more uh, advantage for that. Whatever may be the case. Okay? Yes. So, next is water, water, water. Water, water, water. So, everywhere it is the issue. So, in spite of, uh, see, in our country, some regions are having surplus rainfall, some deficit. So, most of the uh, states or most of the regions in India are facing the water stress. Means lack of water. And you know, to address that issues, I mean water issue, we are having many programs. 
Take the example of Telangana Ambitious Program. So Mission Kakatiya. It is to renovate and renovate the tanks. And central government's Mission Amrit Sarovar. And even we are having water harvesting schemes. Many things. Data given by the central groundwater tab, groundwater board, which monitors groundwater levels throughout the country, shows about 60% of the wells monitored have registered a rise in groundwater levels. Rise in groundwater levels. What is the reason? It is a temporary phenomena. Because of adversary of climate, we are getting more rainfall. So recently, I mean two days ago or three days ago, we faced the hailstorm. It was destructive to the farmers of Telangana. Of course, not only Telangana, all the farmers who face this rainfall. So recent heavy rainfall and in some, some districts of Telangana, the average annual rainfall was more than double. If their annual uh, average rainfall is 100, they experienced more than 200 centimeters of rainfall. However, the groundwater levels in some part of the country are declining continuously. Steps taken by central government, National Water Policy 2012. It stresses on recycle and reuse. After this, we are not having water policy, but still we are having other policies. It advocates conservation, promotion and protection of water, augmenting the availability of water through rainwater harvesting. Rainwater harvesting is the, is the important concept. Direct use of rainfall, yes. Recycling, reuse of water. Increasing water use efficiency. What is the meaning of increasing water use efficiency? So, in irrigation, we have to go for micro-irrigation. Micro-irrigation. Micro-irrigation ir includes drip, drip irrigation, sprinkler irrigation, and also rain guns. Okay? Yes. Now, Jal Shakti Abhiyan, launched in 2019, implemented by government uh, of India to harvest the um, rainfall and the creation of artificial recharge structures, watershed management. You know what is meant by watershed management? To see that the rainwater will not join with the river. Why? If it join with the river, I mean the river will go to the ocean and uh, dump the water without any use. Amrit Sarovar, it, it is aimed at developing and rejuvenating 75 water bodies in each district. Water bodies, not only tanks. 75 water bodies in each district. It may be tank or any other dam, etc. And Central Groundwater Authority constituted under the Environment Protection Act 1986 for the purpose of regulation and control of groundwater by industries, mining projects, infrastructure projects, etc. in the country. But unluckily what is happening because of lack of uh, I mean, responsible officers, there is no control. Of, there is no control on digging of bore wells. You can see in Hyderabad, one day or other day, somewhere, the bore will be working. In spite of the people knowing that water is available beyond 1000 feet or, 12, or, or even 300 feet, but still, but still they will go for digging the bore wells. Atal Bujal Yojana. Implemented by the central government with an outlay of 600 crores in collaboration with states in certain water stressed areas, not in the, not throughout India. Water stressed areas of Gujarat, Haryana, Karnataka, MP, Maharashtra, Rajasthan, and UP. And Vidarbha area of Maharashtra is highly facing the problem of water problem. I mean, water, uh, water, I mean, depth. Okay. Okay. Then uh, next is the National Aquifer Mac Mapping Program. What is meant by aquifer? Aquifer is a uh, strata which is porous and permeable. On digging bore well, it will yield the water. That is called as the aquifer. That aquifer we have to map. So whether the I mean water levels, which is called as saturated level, is falling at alarming rate. Or it is recharged continuously because of the natural rainfall. That is the meaning of the aquifer. See, this is the ground level. And you are having the natural groundwater level. What is the meaning of natural groundwater level? Means up to this, the zone is saturated. Means the voids 
air packets are filled with the water. So when you dig a bore well, what happens? Water will enter into this chamber, bore chamber. This is called as the aquifer. When it is having the capacity to, to yield water, if we dig the bore, uh, a tube well or bore well or well, water may be the case. This is called as the aquifer. When it yields the water, then only it is called as aquifer. So what we will do under this program, this is mapped and even in Telangana also you are having a special agency to map these aquifers. Even for Telangana people, we have discussed that question in the mains. Okay. So they will map and they will see whether this is this national groundwater level is falling at alarming rate or it is getting recharged. Now I told you because of recent, uh, I mean extremes of uh, climate, we are having abnormal rainfall. So groundwater level has increased, no doubt in it. But in the other way, it has destroyed a lot. And extremes of climate are not good. So I mean, recent hailstorm in Telangana has created a lot of devastating effect on the farmers. And even KCR has declared a compensation, if I am not wrong, 10,000 per hectare. It may be highest in the history of uh, India. Maybe, I don't know. Okay? Yes. It is with regard to the concept of aquifer and mapping program. And uh, Marshall plan for artificial recharge to groundwater. So, this aquifer has to be recharged. So, now, suppose if all the water which we get from rainfall, if it joins with the river and the river will go to the ocean and dump the water. It will not render any use for us. So, this rainwater, we have to catch it and you have to recharge that by uh, water harvesting method or going for afforestation. Afforestation will also increase the groundwater level. How the tree will retard the velocity of the water. Automatically, the water will get more time to percolate into the subsurface. Then it will recharge. Of course, we have discussed this in the routine classes. And even in the water harvesting techniques, we will also construct the check dams. We will also construct the check dams. Okay? Check dams. Why these check dams will retard the velocity of water? Automatically, more time to percolate. Okay? Yes. And uh, water is a state subject and the construction of large reservoirs for, for, for storage of water to meet the water requirements falls under the purview of the states. But still, federal government will support like you are having accelerated irrigation benefit program where the ongoing projects of state government are stalled because of lack of finance. Then federal government will give the money in. Okay? Yes. Okay. So, Kanak Rele, of course, she died. She was known as one of the India's most inventive classical dancers and pioneering dance education, educationists. And she was proficient in the Mohini Atam. Mohini Atam is the classical dance of which state? Mohini Atam is the classical dance of Kerala. And you know, the theme of the Mohini Atom is Mohini Basmasura. Mohini Basmasura. Yeah. She brought systemic structure, academic, academic veracity and much currency to Mohini Atom. She was awarded the first Guru Gopinath National Puraskaram by the government of Kerala. Of course, various awards, even including the Padma Sri, Padma Bhushan, etc. And when you come to the Mohini Atom, story of dance of Vishnu in Mohini form. You know Mohini Basmasura. So Vishnu in the form of Mohini. Why? Because of, I mean this Basmasura was a demon. And uh, if I am not wrong, if he keeps his hand in any, any person's head, he will die. Okay? 
so he was creating lot of confusion so to kill basmasura mohini will uh, sorry vishnu will take the attire of mohini and dance in front of basmasura and in course of dam auto, uh, dance automatically uh, this basmasura is forced to keep his hand on his head automatically he will also die even from our childhood days we are listening this story okay yes it is a solo dance performed by women of course footwork uh, gentle footwork and uh, beauty and grace extraordinary costumes etc integrate some elements of bharatanatyam and kathakali even kathakali is also the classical dance of kathakali is also the classical dance of kerala don't get confused with the kathak kathak is of uh, north india costume theek hai white colored saree with gold gold brocade and gungru gungru means uh, anklet now when you come to the indian classical dances so with the help of our rich uh, culture i mean architecture okay and even books we have given uh, i am designation of classical dances to eight eight dance forms and uh, which agency is authorized to give this designation which agency is responsible to give the designation of classical dance online students okay so sangeet natak academy if i am not wrong or sahitya natak academy sangeet natak academy is the authority to give this designation and recently added was satriya and even ministry of culture also added another dance or sorry even some other dance but yes chaur or it is mask dance if i am not wrong it is a mass dance okay of course it was given that status by ministry of culture sangeet natak academy has not recognized so sangeet natak academy is the agency to give this status okay now we are having eight theek hai but that mass dance was not given this status only ministry of culture recognized that theek hai excavations inscriptions chronicles genealogies of kings and artists literary such as so and so uh, give us extensive evidence of uh, dances in india if you go to uh, the hampi there is not a mandapa you can see many sculptures of women in dancing poses the indian classical dance have two basic aspects of course tandava movement and rhythm and lasya grace bhava and rasa one time asked in the examination of course we have discussed in our routine classes natya nritya and nritya this nritya is the expressional component mudras or gestures the nine rasas love heroism pathos humor anger fear disgust try to remember the rasas nine nine rasas the natyashastra written by bharat muni is the most prominent source of the indian aesthetics for establishing the characteristics of the dances book is also very important uh, now when you come to the bharatanatyam it is a classical dance of the uh, tamil nadu the uh, the abhinaya darpana by nandikeshwara abhinaya darpana by nandikeshwara is one of the main source for this dance and uh, bharatanatyam dance is known to be ekarya means only one person takes many roles that is single performance you try to remember ekarya because in upsc prelims all the words from ncert will be encountered of course we are not going into deep because we have already discussed in our routine classes and it is usual form the dance is generally broken into seven main parts alarippu jatiswaram shabda varna pada tillana and shloka if i am not wrong alarippu is the first uh, stage of the dance initial period of the dance 
Krishna Iyer Rukmini Devi had played a significant role in helping the dance regain its popularity. And when you come to the Kathak, it is of North India. It is nothing but telling of stories. And Birju Maharaj is the top exponent. And of course, he is no more if I am not wrong. Yes. It was primarily a temple or village performance wherein the dancers narrated stories from ancient scriptures. The, le the legends of Radha Krishna were enacted in folk plays called Ras Leela. Of course, even in, even in, the, in uh, I mean North India, even Ras Leela is also a folk dance, Ras Leela. So, this Kathak was patterned by Awab, Awad Nawab, that is Wajid Ali Shah, the last Nawab of ours, it grew into a major art form, Wajid Ali Shah. Of course, these people are known for uh, uh, rejuvenating or uh, giving a push for the local culture also. Even we are having a concept called as Laknavi culture, even including the Laknavi Urdu also. If I am not wrong, the person name, the person who encouraged the Laknavi culture is uh, Asaf Uddhavla. Asaf or Abzal? Asaf. Abzal Uddhavla? Yes, Abzal Uddhavla. Abzal Uddhavla, yes, yes. Excellent friend. And uh, you know, Avad, Prince's state was annexed by British under the pretext of misrule. It is only Prince's state which was joined by British or, or annexed by British in the pretext of misrule. It is also very important. Okay? Yes. Usually a yes, solo performance. Yes. Kathak is the only form of classical dance varied to Hindustani or North Indian music. Okay? Like classical dances, you are having the classical music and also folk music. So when you come to the classical music, they will have rules and regulations. You cannot uh, jump like, uh, I mean, you cannot sing like anything. And uh, the classical dance, sorry, classical music of North India is Hindustani. Whereas South India, Carnatic. And Hindustani music, had its origin from the period of Delhi Sultans. Amir Kusro has stored the roots of Hindustani music. We have discussed Amir Kusro. And Amir Kusro was called as Tutaye Hind or Indian Parrot by Alauddin Khilji. Alauddin Khilji. And when you come to Alauddin Khilji, he is the first king of North India to have supremacy over the South India means not uh, the other kings, first Muslim king. Because before that also, many Hindu kings had their uh, sovereignty over South India. Okay? Yes. And when you come to the Hindustani music, unlike Carnatic music, it is having local dialects. Local dialects of Hindustani music are called as, what is the name? given for the local dialects. In, in Carnatic music, no question of any local dialects. Whereas in Hindustani music, you are having the local dialects. Means the, I mean, performers change their uh, method of singing or something else based on the local conditions or local requirements. Yes, yes. They are called as the Garanas. That is very important. Garanas. Local dialects were called as the Garanas. Yes. Lady Lila Soke revived the classical style. Some prominent dancers include Birju Maharaj, Chitara Devi. Now Kathakali, once again Kerala. Chakriyar Kuttu, Pudiyatam, Krishnatam, and Ramanatam are few of the ritual performing arts of Kerala. Yes. What is ritual performing? In course of performing or in course of worshipping deity, they will play this dance. That is a ritual performing arts. Even every state, every region is having such kind of things. Like uh, 
in uh, Telangana you are having Ogukata. In uh, AP you are having Kavadi. Many things. Take it. Kathakali is a blend of dance, music and acting and just dramatizing. So actually, this Kathakali will have lot of costumes. Lot of costumes. Okay? And uh, emphasis is given on the eye movement. Movement of the eyes. Kathakali is a blend of dance, music and acting and, and dramatized stories which are mostly adapted from the Indian epics like Ramayana, Mahabharata or, or other any ancient stories or Puranas also. How many Puranas are there? How many Puranas are there? How many Puranas? Puranas are 18 in number. Yes, Ashtavadasa Purana. Okay? But don't get confused. Even there are many Upapuranas. Along with the Puranas, we are having many Upapuranas. And uh, these Puranas epics were compiled into the written form in the period of Guptas. Guptas. In Sanskrit language. In the period of Guptas. Okay? Yes. Different facial colors indicate different mental stages and character. Example, green nobility, black wicked, red patches combining royalty and evil. Because one question will come from the classical dances. Try to remember this also. Yes. Hand gestures, of course, facial expressions, eye movements are important. No issue. Raman Kuti Nair and Kala Mandalam Gopi were the prominent artists. And when you come to the next one, Kuchipudi, Andhra Pradesh, had its origin from the Kuchelapuram. And even Kutub Shai rulers patterned it. Though they were Muslims, they patterned this. Kutub Shai rulers. It was known under the generic name of Yakshagana earlier, just before that. Of course, you cannot compare Yakshagana with the Kuchipudi. But still, so there may be some roots. In 17th century, Kuchipudi style of Yakshagana was conceived by Sijendra Yogi. He was steeped into the literary Yakshagana tradition being guided by his guru, Tirtha Narayana Yogi, who composed the Krishna Lila Tarangini, a Kavya in Sanskrit. So try to remember this book because we have not encountered this book. Krishna Lila Tarangini is written by Tirtha Narayana. We have not encountered this work in our routine classes. Now, it is performed as grand drama performance in groups and also both solo items. Same costumes, ornaments are also important. Yamani Krishnamurti and Raja Reddy are prominent dancers. And even you can see the Kuchipudi dancers playing on plate and also keeping diyas on their head. Unlike the Bharatanatyam. Of course, Mohini Atam just now we have discussed. Mohini Atam, a dance of Mohini, incarnation of Lord Vishnu, the classical solo dance of Kerala. And references of Mohini Atam can be found in the text Vyavahara Mala written in 1709 by Majamagalam. Of course, tough to remember. Okay? Yes. Movements have been borrowed from Nangiyar Kotu and female folk dances, Kai Kotakolu and the Tiruvar. We have discussed just now. Kerala is having many folk dances. So they have taken some, uh, some steps or some acts from these folk dances. It has elements of Bharatanatyam, grace and elegance and Kathakali, vigor, but it is more erotic, lyrical and delicate. Sunanda Nair and Pallavi Krishna are the notable artists. Now Odissi, of course, Odisha. The major subjects of, of performance are loads of incarnation of Lord Vishnu. You know what is meant by incarnation? Avatar. Avatar. Incarnation means avatar. T 
ठीक है ए सॉफ्ट डांस बैक्ड बाय सूथिंग लिरिक्स एंड इज सिमिलर टू भरतनाट्यम इन टर्म्स ऑफ मुद्रास एंड एक्सप्रेशंस सो मेनी आर लाइक आई मीन भरतनाट्यम टर्म डैज मोबाइल स्कल्पचर इट इनकॉर्पोरेट्स टू मेजर पोस्चर्स त्रिभंगा द बॉडी इज डिफरेंट एट द नेक टॉर्सो एंड द नीस मेनी टाइम्स आज इन द एग्जामिनेशन त्रिभंगा पोजीशन and so a position in middle is square so odissi remember tribanga and satriya you know assam shankar deva is the pioneer pioneer Sat satram means a, a i mean monastery where the pilgrims used to take rest the satriya dance form was introduced in the 15th century ad by vaishnava saint and reformer shankar deva as a who was a who propagated the i mean vaishnava faith so He is governed strictly laid down principles in respect of Hasta Mudras, footworks, Aharyas, etc. So Satriya belongs to Assam. Now Manipuri had its origin. It was popularized by Tagore. The origin of Manipuri dance can be traced back to ancient times that go beyond recorded history. Lai Haro Haroba is the earliest form of dance which forms the base of all cell dance in Manipur. I mean, literally meaning the merry making of the gods. It is performed as a ceremonial offering. The popular ra Rasila dance of Manipur originated in the reign of 18th century king Bagya Chandra, and uh, Manipur dance has a large repertoire. However, the most popular forms are the Sankirtana, Tangta. Okay, leave it. Now, of course, sir has told this. What are Sansad Ratna awards? So, it is the award given to the parliamentarians who rendered a great service okay and you have to remember they were inspired in 2010 inspired by the teachings of former president apj kalam who launched the first edition of the award function in chennai they seek to recognize and felicitate the top performing mps on the basis of their work in the apex legislative body what is apex legislative body parliament is the ultimate legislative body in our country of course at state level state laws are made by state legislature its jury committee comprises eminent parliamentarians and members of civil society and was chaired by the minister of state parliamentary affairs and co-chaired by see remember this point is very important the awards are not given by the government of india it is the prime point foundation which runs the awards show try to remember ppf prime point foundation because in the coming group on prelims of tspsc which of the following is true with regard to sansad awards understand yeah of course no need to number i mean no need to know about the number or winner now what is meant by neutral citation system now courts apex courts wanted to introduce the neutral citation system what is the meaning of that neutral citation system okay see which judgment is known for the basic structure of the constitution which judgment is known for the basic structure of the constitution all and students okay case on the bharati case see what i meant to say is any issue if any issue comes with regard to fundamental rights in the court of justice etc while giving judgment the supreme court used to say that it is basic structure of constitution as revealed in this so and so judgment we are taking into cognizance and delivering our judgment or or they can cite the earlier cases like minerva mills case or whatever be the case so now they want to put an end to such system without commenting the previous judgment 
now they will give they will deliver their judgment that is called as the neutral citation system neutral citation system you can see all uh, cases earlier they used to uh, whenever they are uh, i'm pronouncing the judgment in the court they used to cite the earlier judgments popular judgments now they want to put an end to this system neutral citation system the chief justice of india announced that the sc will adopt a neutral citation system for its judgment what is a citation a case citation is essential an identification tag for a judgment and it would contain a reference number the year of the judgment the name of the court etc like you are having case on the bharati case 19 19 1973 april april 24th case between case between case on the bharati versus yes state of kerala kbc versus state of kerala okay yes for example for the landmark case on the bharati case the citation is ar 1973 sc 1461 if you search this in the google you will get everything with regard to the case on the bharati case so now supreme court wanted to end this sort of tag what is a neutral citation a neutral citation would mean that the court would assign its own citation distinct from those given by traditional law reporters enabling a uniform citation means no question of uh, uh, i mean specifying the earlier judgment of course now virtual trade corridor so india and uae are exploring creating a virtual trade corridor to facilitate the quicker clearance of shipments means everything is monitored by the gps and also our computers to check whether the uh, whether which port is empty which port is busy such that our our reports uh, sorry our ships will be uh, loaded or unloaded at a faster rate because we are a great tr a trade partner for the uae and under proposal approvals and clearances related to customs will be given online on both sides it will allow the customs authorities of the two countries to access the pre arrival information for cargo movement thereby making cross validation of information significantly faster and facilitating the pre clearance of goods so before that only they will clear and uh, they will allow and so now take the example of uh, our fast track earlier before fast track we used to stop at that uh, uh, toll gate and uh, we used to pay the amount physically and he used to give us uh, the receipt it used to take nearly 5 minutes not less than 5 minutes for that work but now fast tag only within 20 30 seconds your car will be scanned i mean the sticker on your car fast tag will be scanned automatically the go the, the gate will be opened and you will move away that is the importance of technology yes now of course even amrishar sir told this perpetual funds securities and exchange board of india is deliberating on allowing permanent capital vehicles ever green or perpetual funds so these are these money is raised by the ngos these funds are aimed at long term investors such as pension funds and insurance firms which do not want the return of capital but regular income means monthly income they will not take back their corpus they will, they will purchase the bond so this fund but they will not ask for the money they will ask for only the interest can be of various types including limited partnership traded publicly on a exchange i am real estate see it is they are the long term funds especially useful for the pensioners so these people will i mean invest in these funds they want only monthly income not appreciation of the bank bonds etc and social stock exchange it is the um, branch of uh, the stock exchange where funds are raised by the ngos or non profit organizations that is the meaning of social stock exchange to provide new avenues for social enterprises to finance social initiatives provide them visibility and bring in increased transparency in fund mobilization and utilization eligibility any social enterprise non profit organization or for profit social enterprise that established its primacy of social intent can get registered listed on the snc segment of course 
try to remember these two perpetual funds and uh, the social stock exchange now when you come to the blue economy that is the economy derived from the ocean when you come to the blue foods food derived from the ocean you know i mean you are having a I mean, lot of fishes etc according to a new study blue food sourced from aquatic environment can reduce nutritional deficiencies and contribute to employment and export revenue in india especially they are rich in b12 and also omega fatty acid omega fat omega 3 is a healthy fat found in very limited uh, items very limited items okay we shall study what is b12 b12 also known as cobalamin cobalamin it is an why see whenever you are uh, b12 deficient you will add the um, pregabalin or methocobalamin tablets it is a water soluble vitamin involved in metabolism it is one of the eight uh, b vitamins it is required for dna synthesis and in both fatty acid and amino acid acid metabolism see such kind of questions will appear in the examination as part of science and technology which vitamins are water soluble which are not yes they are getting appeared no doubt in it vitamin b12 deficiency may lead to a reduction in healthy red blood cells that is anemia what is omega 3 they are healthy fat that support heart health help prevent heart disease and stroke one key benefit is helping to lower your triglycerides triglycerides if triglycerides uh, increase in your body automatically will your uh, uh, blood will become thick not thin blood should be thin if blood is thin even it can pass through a small uh, i mean opening also so the, uh, all these are uh, harmful a deficiency of essential fatty acid either omega 3 or omega 6 can cause rough scaly skin and dermatitis yes try to remember this then come to rooftop solar power sorry solar for poverty elevation one thing suppose if if a house see many villages or many regions in india are not having electricity supply because of bad terrain the government is unable to run the i mean the lines to give power now the best way is rooftop solar power just they will have the you know how how solar power works photovoltaic cells will uh, generate the power which we have discussed in our routine classes now what happens this power is used by this inhabitants or inmates it will reduce the poverty no doubt in it how suppose earlier they were forced to pay the electricity bill now they are not paying no need earlier they were deprived of electricity their children could not study or they could not do anything now they can do many things and even in manufacturing in laying in transporting etc also many labor are involved so it will also create employment opportunities automatically poverty will get reduced so such kind of things may encounter in your mains exam a new white paper proposes a scheme for rooftop solar photovoltaic for poverty elevation when you come to the significance yes access to electricity in china rtpv is one of the identified 10 initiatives rolled out by the government to lift rural households out of poverty because in india also many areas are deprived of the electricity cost savings for people living in poverty who spend a significant portion of their income on energy energy solar energy can help reduce their energy bills and save money yes no question of paying any bills you can charge your cell phone everything free of cost even you can charge your vehicle yes now everybody are, are having the i mean electric vehicles they will charge job creation improved health solar energy can help reduce indoor air pollution and improve the health of people living in poverty see in this sense what is indoor air pollution solar photovoltaic cells if they are used for cooking 
you know even solar uh, uh, power is also used for cooking also i mean unique system is there like take the example of sirdi one of the world's largest co solar cooking system so in the sense even they if they use uh, this for cooking earlier they were cooking with the help of firewood which used to pollute the house it is the meaning of this sentence when you come to the high initiate uh, sorry i mean limitation initial cost is high and uh, proof availability because many people many poor people are living in the huts they cannot uh, take the load of the that photovoltaic plate and depend on some weather you cannot implement this in the jammu and kashmir or the regions around uh, the himachal pradesh because of continuous fall of smog and even we have discussed in the our routine mains class that solar power cannot be used in that circumstances they are going for the geothermal power take the example of ladakh you are having a geothermal plant why they are not going for solar because of this climatic condition of course maintenance maintenance is very less but still we have to clean time and again because they will work for 30 35 years in the present uh, Our uh, technology is having a life of 30, 35 years. Now implementation issues. India has achieved 7.9 gigawatt of installed rooftop. See, again the issue in this is we are importing the materials from other countries to manufacture the photovoltaic cells. That is the main issue. Most of the um, requirement of this uh, sector we are relying on the imports. That is the that is major issue. It is not mentioned here. and government measures for this many things grid connected rooftop solar scheme now what is meant by grid connected roof to sorry rooftop solar scheme even this will minimize the poverty grid connected rooftop solar power means if we are having a solar power plant on our building whenever we are not using this power this power will be consumed by the our grid even for that they will pay the money that is the meaning of grid connected rooftop solar scheme so excess power will be taken by the government and they will pay for that kisan urja suraksha evam uthan mahabhiyan a federal government scheme for grid connected renewable energy power plants solar waste pumps grid connected agriculture pumps grid connected agriculture pumps means even in our field also we can establish the plant and when we are not using that we will give the power to the government and national wind solar hybrid policy atal jyoti yojana national solar mission surya mitra skill development program and when you come to the international level one sun one world one grid yeah in future it may come Sara Desert, Thar Desert, they are called as powerhouses of solar energy. Automatically, from there we will supply to all parts of the world. Who knows? Who knows? Yes. See this word. What is the proposed scheme for RPTV? The report proposes a central government sponsored scheme in the field of party PV. It could be called Suraj Se Rozgari. Rozgari means employment. suraj means sun suraj se rozgar all hindi words okay recently maybe yesterday if i am not wrong Ongtad has released a report 2023 with regard to technology and innovation. It highlights the opportunities that green that green innovation goods and services with smaller carbon footprints. What is the aim? To see that our service sector or manufacturing sector, whatever may be the thing, they will emit the less carbon. And I mean, we will go for the green energy or clean energy. so which country has uh, taken many steps in that india has fared well means we have 
uh, improved a lot. Improved a lot. The report analyzes the market size of 17 green and frontier technologies such as artificial intelligence, the Internet of Things, and electric vehicle, and their potential to create jobs. And you know, on the roads of India, I mean, there are a number of electric vehicles. Even a local person is also manufacturing a vehicle. Unlike earlier, if you want to purchase a bike, either Honda or Suzuki or Hero or something like that. Now, Bisley, Gizli, etc., etc. You can see on the roads, Tikku, Tillu, e-bike, beach bike, each bike. Even local people are converting the auto from diesel to electric. Yes, in Balnagar, Sanatnagar, they are converting. And few people are also converting the existing activas into electric. Okay, whether it is uh, valid by the RTO or not, only God knows. Okay. And uh, even the report said that the northern countries are spending more amount on, on, on these kind of researches. That is 3% of their GDP. And uh, only a few developing countries reach 1% of GDP expenditure. Most countries have increased their climate change related green official development assistance. Now, India is ranking. It is the need of the hour. India remains the greatest overperformer ranking at 67 positions. Better than expected. Because no doubt we are spending a lot on the green energy initiatives. We have, at a faster rate, we are purchasing the electric vehicles and even we are also using green hydrogen as a fuel and even our share uh, in the non uh, i mean uh, our share in the solar power has increased okay even we are uh, far beyond our target here philippines 54 positions better and vietnam 44 better now you know shahidi divas shahidi divas So it is observed on 23rd March. It is the day. On the day, three of our, I mean, the young freedom fighters were executed. Bhagat Singh, Sukhdev and Rajguru. Bhagat Singh, Sukhdev, Rajguru were uh, accused, not accused, were convicted in the murder of Saunders. Okay? Assassinating a British police officer for mistakenly assassinating a British police officer, John Saunders, although their target was British police superintendent James Scott, but still in all history books, even we will also study as the Saunders police officer. James Scott is the police officer who is responsible for the death of Lala Lajpat Rai. When Lala Lajpat Rai was participating in the anti Simon Commission agitation at Lahore. Because of that Lati blows in course of time, Lalajpat Rai died. To avenge the death of their leader, they plan to kill this person at Lahore railway station. And even they have killed, mistakenly, they have killed John Sanders. But their target was James Scott. And you know, even they will throw pamphlets in the Central Legislative Assembly where they will get court arrested and said they were uh, brave and even you know we have discussed about a hunger strike hunger strike hunger strike and even one person will die after fasting for 64 continuous days what is the name of that person who died after 64 days continuous uh, uh, fasting or observing hunger strike Yes, Jatin Das, Jatin Das, Jatin Das, Jatin Das, in the Lahore conspiracy case. They were observing fasting because they were demanding the treatment of political prisoners. Political prisoners. Okay? Yes, no issue. The day is also known as Sarvodaya Day or Martyr's Day. It is different from the Martyr's Day observed on 30th January, which commemorates the assassination of. Mahatma Gandhi. Mahatma Gandhi was killed by Nathuram Godse. 
so ethical lessons from bhagat singh's life of course patriotism and uh, courage especially for the people who are preparing for the competitive examination and especially for the people who are preparing for state services they should have courage because even after writing the examination only god knows when the result come and when the exam will be cancelled everything will be gloomy unclear you need patience courage we have to learn from these great personalities and selflessness it is also very important but if you want to prepare for the i mean government examination you should be selfish then only you will study if you are not selfish you will not study justice and fairness he went on a hunger strike in jail to protest the inhuman treatment of prisoners and to draw attention to the cause of indian independence that is a uh, lower conspiracy case and where jadindars will tie yes kandagiri udaygiri and these caves i mean belong to the kalinga rulers especially karavela in these caves even you are also having the inscription on the walls of these caves you are having inscription and they are group of caves and uh, even these caves are giving an historical evidence of war between the kalinga rulers and uh, shatavanas which inscription gives the evidence of war between kalinga rulers and shatavanas my dear online students yes hatikumpa inscription it is one of the cave so uh, the archaeological survey of india said that these caves are deteriorating at a faster rate so appropriate steps, uh, steps should be taken so such kind of things uh, may encounter in the exam but not in this manner in different manner you will study this but they will not ask this if they ask they will ask in the question itself what do you know they will ask in the question what do you do know they will give in the statement that is the problem with the present examination about kandagiri udaygiri caves udaygiri and kandagiri caves have created during the reign of kalinga king karavela in the first and second century bc near modern day bhubaneswar udaygiri has 18 caves whereas kandagiri has 15 caves each of these caves have various inscription either in brahmi script or devanagari script hathi gumpa just now i told about the hathi gumpa giving a hathi gumpa inscription is giving the uh, historical i mean evidence of chatavanas and kalingas and yes many gumpas jay vijay gumpa etc now you know as far as our geographical events or climatic events are concerned we are having a issue called as atmospheric river atmospheric river even california is facing a Uh, I mean, lot of hardship, so because of this issue. What is meant by atmospheric riv river? See, atmospheric river is nothing but a transport of abnormal, abnormal heavy moisture, moisture laden winds from. nearby ocean to the continents thousands of kilometers they are traveling and you know when these moisture laden winds are subjected to condensation for some or other reason one reason is if they move upwards if they move upwards they are subjected to condensation what is the phenomena involved in this condensation when they move say in the upward direction what is that called that is the lapse rate lapse rate automatically condensation and they will cause heavy rainfall so now 
this heavy rainfall is causing lot of issues and the main reason for this atmospheric rivers is the climate change because of high temperature moisture what happens because of high temperature the air will the atmospheric air will get the I mean, capacity to hold more and more moisture you know at high temperatures air will hold more moisture so the climate change is one of the reason for this atmospheric river so what happens it suddenly comes cool down and abnormal rainfall so take the example of california they are having the issues of the forest fires how this atmospheric river is giving impetus for the forest fires see because of this abnormal rainfall forests are growing though it is short spell but still the plants grass will grow within no time because of dry spell all this will be all this will become dry automatically this dry part is responsible for the coming abnormal forest fires are you able to understand this how atmospheric rivers are uh, posing threat to california which are already facing the issue of forest fires okay yes so try to remember this phenomena uh and one important thing is these are formed away from the tropics that is very important extra tropical areas you know what is tropics up to 23 and 1/2 degrees on both side of the equator an atmospheric river is a narrow and elongated region in the atmosphere that carries a substantial amount of water vapor outside the tropics and why it is carrying substantial amount of water vapor it is because of climate change at high temperature atmospheric air will have the capacity to carry more moisture researchers first coined the term atmospheric river in the 1990s it is also known as a tropical plume tropical connection moisture plume water vapor surge and cloud band cloud band atmosphere rivers can be thousands of kilometers long and transport water vapor equal to the average flow of water at the mouth of the mississippi river so this water may have lot of devastating effect like floods excess water is not good if daily it is, if daily it is raining means even if even you will not get the power supply also okay this is with regard to the uh, atmospheric river and i i told you why it is why it is problematic because even though the forest grows in california but they are subjected to the forest fires in course of time now the supreme court asked the center to provide data that may point to a more dignified less painful and socially acceptable method of executing so supreme court has a center whether you can go to 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 execute a person in other manner rather than a hang rather than hanging because hanging may be painful in the initial period so they want to see that the person will die without any pain like in quran there is halal system if i am not wrong without uh, pain the chicken or what do you say is subjected to the death penalty okay yeah the bench has sought fresh data to substantiate the argument that a more human means of execution can be found and you know death penalty death penalty is nothing but it is also called as capital punishment and when you come to india when you come to india of course many countries have banned the capital punishment on humanitarian grounds okay but india has not banned we are uh, convicting the person with death penalty on rarest to rare cases that you have to remember heinous crime like raping a 3 months old girl and uh, killing her by uh, making her body into parts like our hariharan in hyderabad has converted his friend's body into parts navin kumar which is a hot topic
ఓకే అండి ద డెత్ పెనాల్టీ ఆల్సో నోన్ యాజ్ క్యాపిటల్ పనిష్మెంట్ ఇస్ ద లీగల్ సెంటెన్స్ ఇన్ సమ్ కంట్రీస్ వేర్ ఎ పర్సన్ ఇస్ పుట్ టు డెత్ బై ద స్టేట్ యాజ్ ద పనిష్మెంట్ ఫర్ ఎ క్రైమ్ దే హావ్ కమిటెడ్ రిమెంబర్ దిస్ సెక్షన్ సెక్షన్ 354 క్లాస్ 5 ఆఫ్ ద కోడ్ ఆఫ్ క్రిమినల్ ప్రొసీజర్ మ్యాండేట్ దట్ ఎ పర్సన్ సెంటెన్స్ టు డెత్ షల్ బి హ్యాంగ్డ్ బై ద నెక్ టిల్ హీ ఇస్ డెడ్ hanged by the neck till he is dead it may take 1 minute 2 minute 3 minutes something remember this section arguments related to death sentence uh, remember this judgment there are two leading judgments on this issue bachan singh versus the state of punjab 1980 which upheld the death penalty but limited to the rarest of the rare cases which we are following rarest of the rare cases Bachan Singh versus the state of Punjab. Now next case. Dean Dayal versus Union of India and others upheld the method by ruling that hanging is as painless as, uh, as, painless as possible and causes no greater pain, pain than any other known method. So hanging is supported by the the uh, uh, by the supreme court in the deen dayal versus union of india case so, so they said that it is painless the the 35th report of the law commission 1967 noted that electrocution the use of a gas chamber and lethal injection were considered by were considered by some to be less pain of course in america they will use the injection they will die okay center stand on death by hanging in its pitonity in the affidavit the government argued that death by hanging was the only viable option to execute a death warrant however the government also sought additional time to examine the other methods maybe injection is the good method of course we are not great persons to counter them but still but the problem is which injection who has to administer if the injection is available enemies may give that injection okay who knows yes what is the practice in other countries according to amnesty international 55 countries around the world have the death sentence on the book in the us an intravenous lethal injection is given in every state execution by firing squad is employed in china and saudi arabia uses beheading apart from other methods beheading means stuck with no time head will be away torso will be away okay zealandia scientists have confirmed the existence of a continent called zealandia which is approximately 1.89 million square miles in size and was one part of the ancient supercontinent called gondwana you know gondwana land angara land Angara land is northern hemisphere, I mean north side, Gondwana southern. So this has moved away from the Gondwana land. India is part of Angara land or Gondwana land, Madam Mother Teresa. India is part of <coughs> Angara land or Gondwana land. India is part of Gondwana land though we are lying in the Asia because we are below Himalayan mountains Gondwana land above Himalayas Angara land yes it is a long narrow micro continent that is mostly submerged in the south pacific ocean so zealandia started to separate from gondwana about 105 million years ago and gradually sank so zealandia now it is in the control of the new zealand now it is considered as the eighth continent eighth continent of the world thank you thank you